A Ponzi scheme has collapsed in the shoe reseller market, sending everyone into a frenzy. This is Michael Malekzade, owner of Zade Kicks LLC. He is based out of Eugene, Oregon, a good place to be as Nike has headquarters in nearby Beaverton and rival Adidas has headquarters in Portland. Zade Kicks claimed to get shoes at a discount, allowing his customer base to acquire high-end sneakers at a price that allowed them to resell for a profit. According to Twitter user at MNNVT, Zade Kicks was literally a top 1% business on Shopify. Just imagine the volume. With a supporting image showing an email from Shopify indicating Zade Kicks was a top 1% business on the platform. What's interesting about this story is that Zade had his business go down in flames a few years earlier as well. On November 7, 2015, an article titled What It Feels Like to Watch Your Entire Sneaker Collection Go Up in Flames was posted on Soul Collector. Malek Zade, a sneaker customizer and reseller based in Eugene, Oregon, who goes by Zade Kicks, made the right move by staying outside, watching in dismay as smoke poured out of his warehouse. The article details a fire that began inside Zade Kicks' warehouse back in 2014 that damaged most of his inventory. His sneaker business suffered a massive blow, while relatively few shoes were damaged by the actual fire, only around $2,000 in inventory, many were wrecked by the water and smoke that filled the warehouse, equaling hundreds of thousands of dollars in loss. Insurance sent an appraiser to evaluate how much his collection was worth. They believed he had multiple hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of sneakers. The major problem was that they paid out based on his cost basis, not what they were worth on the open market. People don't realize, I didn't cash out, Malek Zadeh explains. Yeah, I got a big chunk of money at once, but that was all money I spent. But all the money I would make for selling the shoe, I never got. For all these shoes I paid 50 bucks for, I got 50 bucks. I never got more than that. The article indicates that he had upwards of 4,000 pairs of sneakers inside that warehouse. With nearly all of them unable to be sold to a reseller, he was stuck. He received an insurance payout, but that basically got him back to where he was. A year later, he says he's back on track. Malek Zadeh changed his business model since the fire and had his best month of sales ever this past September. His outlook on the business before he was able to reestablish himself speaks to his determination. Six and a half years later, this happened. Anyone visiting his website today will see this message. The owner of Zadeh Kicks LLC petitioned the court for voluntary dissolution under court supervision and the appointment of a receiver in order to protect and preserve the assets belonging to the receivership estate and to assist in the dissolution of the business. You know, we've had money with Zade for years. We knew it was shady, somewhat, and we knew that maybe this could happen sometime. And it finally happened. I didn't expect it to be now, and it sucks that it did happen now. There are a lot of speculations about what might have triggered the company's collapse. One was that he was running a Ponzi scheme. They would go nutty under retail. It's crazy that we're at this point now because it was like how we all kept saying it, but it was like, all right, so it's probably just a Ponzi scheme. You just never wanted to be, I guess, coin it or whatever. And you just you just keep riding the wave. I think what hurts the customers the most is that their profit center has dried up. Zade was somehow getting shoes at a massive discount before they hit retail, which allowed his customers to buy the shoes at enough of a discount to make solid profit on the resale market. I literally before blew up on Twitter. All of us have ordered from him once or twice because his deals were just insane. And I I remember I was having a conversation way, way back. This is like two, three years ago. We were trying to figure out how on earth does he afford this? Because some of those bulk orders would go like 20 to 30 percent under retail on like a UNC or something like that. It just made no sense. Ponzi schemes collapse overnight. It's sudden and immediate and everyone is left holding the bag. If this was a Ponzi scheme, then everyone holding the bag today likely has more collective losses than the profits made from previous participants. As a bag holder, it hurts. I ain't gonna hold you. We're just gonna go through the process, try to get our bread back and, you know, file for a charge back do what we have to and keep it moving. I think we all kind of expected this to happen at some point, like... It realistically just didn't make sense, as y'all was saying. This Twitter thread from user at Resell Memes highlights that Zade filed for Chapter 7 bankruptcy. I'm guessing, best case scenario, he still had a lot of shoes in his warehouse and the receivership would return those items to the customers. If this does turn out to be a Ponzi scheme, then there's 0% chance that the newest customers of his shoes will either see their money back or receive shipment of the product. The way the day ships, he usually makes you go past the, the four-month natural period of getting your your chargebacks. Credit card companies generally allow up to four months for chargebacks. This is the most damaging thing for an e-commerce business, so it sounds like Zade would give people store credit if their product never arrived. That, to me, is an indication of a Ponzi. You don't have tangible money to return because you're buying product for the previous customers, so you just tell the new customers to buy something else on the website hoping they never do. Even though, I, if I'm not mistaken, it's pretty much all PayPal. It really sucks for the people that have uh, his store credit, because I know a lot of people got stuck with the store credit situation, because if a shoe didn't drop, he just 
made you get stuck with store credit? I was able to come across an article on DealStruck about Zadek Kicks being a customer of theirs. Zadek Kicks has seen tremendous growth and sales are now topping $1 million a year. I believe the article was written a few years ago, but his business was generating pretty good revenue the last few years. Things changed for the better for Zadek Kicks when Michael was referred to DealStruck and the rest is footwear history. DealStruck worked with Michael to determine the best financial product for his rapidly expanding business and was able to offer terms that were much friendlier to his business's bottom line. Until we fully know what happened with Michael's business, we can only speculate as to what caused the collapse. Could it have been high interest rate loans that became due? I feel like he got in over his head. Like someone just mentioned about the 500k chargeback, I think that probably set things off and just tumbled from there. Well, a lot of people were getting Zadi pairs that had StockX tags on them as well. Ponzi's collapse because something big happens unexpectedly. Because of the nature of the scheme can't withstand any major disruption, the entire business goes to zero overnight. These guys claim that someone filed a $500,000 chargeback against Zade a couple weeks back. That could have been the trigger to the collapse since that amount of money could disrupt the next order of product in order to keep the scheme alive. With the allure of the crypto market, it's also possible that he may have taken the revenue generated from shoe sales and invested in some meme coin, hoping the coin would double by the time the shoe are ready to ship and he had to fulfill his obligations to the seller. Here's a tweet by at the real T Blake hearing amount people might be out is eight figures. Here's a screenshot taken from Twitter of a Discord group focused on people who lost money from Zade Kicks. The channel is titled How Much Are You Down? And the responses indicate that a lot of money has been taken from customers. There's only eight minutes separating the top posts from the bottom posts, and the amounts lost easily clear $1 million. Zade 100% put all your pre order money into Luna for the sustainable 20% APR and lost it all. I wouldn't be surprised if he took a crazy gamble with accounts receivable money. Think of how rich you can get if you take $1 million for a product that will be delivered in the future and you invest the money in a crypto coin that earns $20,000 a month in passive income. There will definitely be more to this story coming soon. Typical bankruptcy happens when sales slow and the company can't pay their debts. That doesn't seem to be the case here because his company was growing. To be continued. Thanks for watching.